Welcome everyone to this webinar on the Ag Career Start application process. Um, this, this webinar is going to largely cover what you need to do to apply and what happens after the application. So if you're still looking for information about Ag Career Start, best to go and watch our previous webinars, which are all available on YouTube. So Chloe, you're going to throw forward to the next presentation for me. Don't mind me, I'm actually sitting in Moree visiting one of our participants, or a few of our participants actually, tomorrow in Mungandai and Moree. So um, perks of working in agriculture, you're always trying to zoom in from somewhere random. So uh, as I mentioned, this is about our Ag Career Start Gap Year program, which is a 10 to 12 month agricultural gap year uh, for young Australians to get jobs on farm. So I'm not going to go through this in any detail. We'll skip forward because hopefully you know enough about Ag Career Start by now. I will introduce uh, the two members of the team who are on board for the webinar today. My name is Kayla Evans and I am the project manager for Ag Career Start. Normally I'm based in Canberra at the National Farmers Federation office, but as I mentioned in Warri, uh, tonight visiting some of our participants. I'm also joined by Chloe Dutschke, who is our Training and Career Development Officer. Um, hopefully you have gotten to know a bit about Chloe already and her role within the team, but she's essentially responsible for uh, upskilling all of our participants on the program and um, she'll be delivering part of this webinar a little bit later on as well. Unfortunately, we are not joined by Stephanie Blake as she is on a flight also to Moree, so she'll be here <laughs> very soon but is missing the webinar, unfortunately. But uh, it's important to know Steph's name because um, Steph will have a lot to do with you through the application process. So Steph really drives that part of, of the program. So do get to know her name um, and her role within the program as well. Let's jump forward, Chloe. So we wanted to start with a little look at where some of our participants are at this year, because if you haven't already applied, uh, it's important to know that it, through the application process, you asked to, to tell us what industry you'd like to work in and also where in Australia you'd be happy to travel. We will cover that a little bit more in greater detail, but this is what some of our participants this year have been doing. So as you can see, we've got some people working in sheep in South Australia, cotton in New South Wales, we've got dairy in Victoria, um, we've got horticulture up in the Northern Territory, beef stations in Queensland, broad acre properties over in WA, and a fantastic placement in dairy down in Tasmania. So that's what some of our participants are doing this year. You might be doing something a little bit different next year, but this is a good example of the options that are available out there. So as I mentioned, when you apply, you are asked uh, to identify an industry that you'd like to work in. Uh, hopefully you've got a bit of an idea. If you don't, that's that's OK, uh, but it's worth having a bit of a think about because when Steph calls you and and asks you <clears throat> how or what your preferences are or when you're asked to identify them in the application process, it's good to get a bit of an idea of what you think you're going to enjoy. So um, at the very least, maybe you can identify that you would like to work with animals or maybe you don't want to work with animals, you want to work with really big machinery and therefore you might prefer something like grain or cotton. So these are just some examples of some of the uh, opportunities that we have had on offer this year, but also some of the opportunities that we've got already on offer for next year. So um, already for next year, we've got placements in sheep, cattle, horticulture, forestry, dairy, poultry, pork, broadacre cropping, viticulture, which is uh, wineries, uh, and a bunch of other different enterprises as well. So lots and lots of different options available to you. When you apply, you have to preference. So you'll be asked to basically rank a list of industries from your first preference being number one, right through to your last preference. Um, if you have something specific that you'd like to do, let's say you'd really like to work in an organic farm, we can absolutely help to arrange that. You just need to pop that other one up high in your preferences and you, it will ask you in the next question uh, what kind of other industry you'd like to work in. And we'll jump to the next one, Chloe. So let's jump in now to the nuts and bolts of the application process. So as I mentioned, 
do a bit of research about those agricultural industries and, and second to that, think about your location preferences. So in the application process, we actually ask you how far away you're willing to move from home from, for your placement. So the first uh, option you can select is that you'd like to live at home or stay at home and commute from your home location to go to your placement. Um, I will just flag that uh, finding placements close to a ge specific geographic location is actually quite difficult for us. Um, it can be done, but it might limit your chances of getting into the program and us finding you a fantastic match. So just be aware of that. Um, if you do select that you would like to live at home, um, it does ask you how far away you'd be willing to travel. So you might say to us you'd be willing to commute for up to an hour, um, maybe uh, for example, we've got some participants this year who um, both live and work in Sydney. So their placement is in the Sydney CBD in a vertical farm. So it can be done, but it might mean that you have to be a bit more open about the kind of industry um, that you'd be willing to work in. So if it's really important to you that you live in a specific location, then maybe be flexible about your industry preferences. And on the flip side, if you're really specific, specific about the industry you'd like to work in, maybe a bit more, be a bit more flexible in your geographic preferences. But the other options for geographic preferences are, uh, second is you'd like to stay within your home state or territory. So that might mean maybe you live in southern New South Wales, but you'd be happy to travel as far north as maybe where I am in Moree, but you're still in New South Wales. The next option is that you're happy to go anywhere, and that means interstate. So um, that's telling us if you live in southern New South Wales, you'd be happy to go to the Northern Territory or to Tasmania or to WA. And then the other option, which is a fantastic option, is that uh, you would like to go remote above all else. So this is for people who really want to work perhaps on a remote cattle station uh, up in the Northern Territory, up in Northern WA. Um, it's important again for you to let us know that so it really helps us find a really great placement for you. Have I forgotten anything about the industry or location preferences, Chloe? No, I think you're all good there, Kayla. Awesome. Uh, so the next part of the application process is that you must prepare a 500 word statement of intent or a five minute video, which explains both why you want to be a part of the Ag Career Start program, but also why you want to work in agriculture. So whether it's you want to have just a gap year in agriculture and that's what you're setting yourself up to do, or maybe you're using this program as the foot in the door for a long term career in the industry. Uh, tell us all about that. We are not looking for people with mountains of experience in agriculture. In fact, this program is really designed for people who don't have experience and are looking for a foot in the door. What we are looking for in those 500 word statement of intent or that five minute video is for you to show us your engagement and how excited you are and why you want to work in the industry and why we would choose you over someone else. So maybe you've always wanted to work in agriculture. Maybe um, you were talked out of doing agriculture at school or going off to do uni in agriculture and you really want to give it a go. Maybe you are going off to uni next or the year after, but you are planning on taking a gap year and you really want to experience ag and, and get to know what it's like to live and work in the regions. Whatever the reason is, uh, let us know. Tell us about yourself um, because this is the piece of information that will be used to, uh, I guess, assist us in finding a good personality match and a good fit for your individual needs in the program. Um, this also goes to our host farmers. So this is something that they will read or watch um, and will ultimately help them decide whether or not you're a good fit for their farm. So that's where that, that uh, statement of intent is really important. You also need to prepare an up-to-date resume. So the resume is not about um, us looking for lots of previous work experience because um, as it's a gap year most of you are quite young it means you actually you probably don't have a lot of work experience what we are looking for on that resume is any extracurricular activities that you might get up to so whether that's um, a sporting club or you volunteer or whatever that might be maybe you tutor um, someone uh, make sure to include that because it just helps us get an idea for the kind of person that you are 
Um, if you have got work experience on there, any skills that you have is great. So maybe you've done a certificate too whilst you're at school. Uh, maybe you've already started a uni degree, but you're taking a break. Make sure all of that's in there. So again, we can get a good feel for who you are and what you're looking for um, in your gap year. And then lastly, the next important piece is to find a referee who can provide a written character reference for you. Um, again, this is really, really important. We can't accept applications that are, um, aren't accompanied by a written reference. Um, in the application process, what you'll do uh, when you go to the application page on the website, there will be um, a list of requirements there. So basically what's written here on the screen will be written on the website and where it says uh, character reference, there's a link you can click to download our reference template and you need to send that reference template to your referee. Now, your referee cannot be someone who is related to you. Um, they must uh, and they can't be a friend. They can be uh, someone you work with in a professional setting. So maybe um, if you do tutor, maybe you can ask um, whoever you tutor for, their parents could write you a reference. Uh, it could be your sporting coach. It could be your um, school teacher. Maybe your careers advisor could write a reference for you. Um, anyone you've done previous work for, it just cannot be someone you're related to. It can't be an aunt, uncle, stepmother, cousin, anything like that, um, even if you have worked for them because it just gets a bit uh, grey. <laughs> so make sure um, you find someone who can give you a great reference. Um, have a read of the reference template when you do download it because there's some questions in there that you might like to chat to your referee about beforehand. Um, one I'm thinking of is um, we ask your referee what they believe your aptitude to working remotely or is or in isolated locations. So have a chat to them, be honest about what you're willing to do and how remote you're willing to work. Um, it, won't, it won't necessarily negate your application from getting in, but it does help us again um, figure out where you would be best placed to um, do your placement. And then your referee will um, submit that completed reference template to us um, I didn't add at the start, but if there are any questions throughout this webinar, please just pop them in the chat and we will answer them as we go. Um, this is quite a detail heavy <laughs> webinar. Um, it's a lot to take in, but if you take anything away from this webinar, it is these four key points here. Anything you want to add, Chloe? No, I think you've covered it really well. Um, yeah, no, I think we're all good there. Fantastic. Let's move on. Yep. Great. So let's chat about uh, the actual process after you apply. So <clears throat> application period is currently open and it, not actually that long left. So we've got just over uh, three and a half weeks, I think, left in the application process. So um, applications close on the 18th of October. It's really important that you get your applications in by then. Um, at this stage, we are not planning to accept applications after the 18th of October. So if you want to uh, want to get on the program for next year, do ensure that you get that application in by then. And our application is all online. Um, something worth noting as well is that unfortunately, our system doesn't allow you to save your application. So once you start your application, you need to see it all the way through. So I would give yourself a good half an hour to complete your application once you've got your um, statement of intent and your resume ready to go. After you've applied, uh, you probably won't hear anything from us for a little while. You will get a confirmation email to say that you, we've received your application. Um, but after that, you probably won't hear from us for a little while um, because we then go into our matching process. So we essentially go through the process then of um, trying to match up uh, host farm applications with participant applications. Um, and then you, you should get an email from us by the end of October that has, um, that will tell you whether or not you've been shortlisted into the program. And then the next piece of communication you'll receive from us is uh, hopefully that you've um, been accepted into the program and we've made a match for you. So, uh, once you've made a match or once we've made a match for you, basically what happens is um, Steph will either call you or email you and let you know that you have been matched in the program. 
and then you will have a short period of time to review that match. So let's say um, you match with a farm here in Moree, a cotton farm. Um, Steph will give you some information about that cotton farm and then you'll have a short period of time to review the placement offering and um, to come back and tell Steph whether or not you are happy with that uh, with that match and you would like to proceed to the next stage. You can decline a match. What I will say is that when we make a match, know that we think that that's the best fit placement for you. It means that we've done a lot of work in the background, um, getting to know our farmers, getting to know you guys. And if we make a match, it's because we truly think this is the best option for you. So, and I caution that because if you decline a match, you have to re-enter the matching process and essentially what it means is you drop down a few rungs in the matching list. Um, so let's say there's 20 people looking for cotton placements next year and you decline the first one that you were given, those next 19, you would drop down under those 19, next 19 people for choices of cotton placements. We would just keep moving down until we find a match. So just understand that we want you guys to be happy with the option you're given, uh, but we have to keep matching moving. And um, I guess we have the best information available to us. And um, yeah, at the very least, we hope you'll proceed to an interview uh, with your matched placement. It's a little bit confusing, but I hope that makes sense. If anyone has any questions about matching process, you can always give us a call uh, or you can send us an email and we can set up a time to chat with you about it. But it is really important that we get that matching right because when we get the matching right everyone has a fantastic experience on farm. So say Steph does send you your uh, match she says congratulations Sam you've been matched with Farmer James in Moree runs a cotton farm uh, it's in the geographic location you wanted and it's in one of your top three preference industries what do you think and you go sounds amazing I'd love to meet them then we go to interview stage so all of our farmers and our participants will do an interview which is pretty much just like a normal job interview we aren't involved in that at all that's a time for you to chat with your potential host farmer one-on-one -on -one, understanding that if you accept the placement with them they're going to become your boss for the next 12 months so um, it's an important time for them to get to know you make sure you're a good fit but it's also a time for you to essentially interview them as well because uh, you want to make sure that you're going to like where you live and who you're living with so we'll talk a bit more about the interview in detail in a moment but uh, those interviews will likely happen online in a similar setting uh, to this so maybe in a zoom or a teams chat uh, could be over the phone but if you do uh, get matched with someone who's close enough to go and visit, we strongly, strongly encourage it. So if you can get to farm and go and have a visit, see what the uh, accommodation looks like, see what kind of um, environment it is, how far it is from the nearest town, all of those sorts of things, we really, really strongly encourage it. And we also encourage your parents to go along to any farm visits as well. So do, um, do ask your host farmer if the option might be there to travel uh, out to the host farm. And then if you go through interview and we're still all, all looking good, uh, your host farmer will then offer you a job um, and that is organised by them. So the participants are employed by the host farmer. You are not employed by us. Um, so the, the employment relationship exists between our participants and our host farmers. We are just here to provide support and be, um, I guess, of assistance throughout the whole process. We do the hard work of finding you the placement, but after that, um, you really become part of the farmer's team. So the farmer will offer you a job, um, and I would assume uh, fairly soon after that, if not with that job offer, you would get an employment contract as well. And essentially, that employment contract will outline your rate of pay, it will outline the start date, so you would have agreed on a start date with your host farmer by then. Um, it would also outline any other details such as um, any leave that you might be entitled to or hours of work and those sorts of things. Uh, as I mentioned, the employment contract will cover the start date, so 
Uh, we'll chat a bit more about start day a little bit later on, but for our 2023 intake, you can start anywhere between basically the 1st of January and uh, the 31st of March. So um, we're just looking to get all of our participants into and into the program and onto farm by the end of March, just so we can get you all onboarded together. And then Chloe will run you through some farm safety training. I'll just run through this because she will talk about it uh, a little bit later on. And then uh, you'll receive the uh, ongoing training and uh, training, engagement, development support from, from the team. So from Chloe and Steph, who you, excuse me, who you'll liaise with fairly regularly. So as I said before, um, how do you know if you've made it into the program? So you'll receive a confirmation that you've applied. You'll receive a confirmation that you've been shortlisted or not shortlisted. Um, if you, uh, so you should be shortlisted as long as you have provided all those documents um, I mentioned, and as long as you meet the criteria for the program. So if you're not clear on the criteria for the program, that is you must be under 25 uh, sorry, up to 25 years of age in your year of intake. So you cannot be turning 26 next year. You can only be turning 25 next year. Um, and, and you must have working rights in Australia, sorry. So we do not sponsor people under this program. You must have existing working rights to participate in the Ag Career Start program. Um, so if you meet all of those things and you've supplied all of your documentation, you've completed a full application, uh, I would expect that you would be shortlisted into the program. Then, uh, as I mentioned, you won't hear from us for a little while after that because then we go into the matching process and then the first you'll hear from us is when we have a match for you. All right, Chloe, do you want to take us through the next one? Yeah, so as Steph mentioned, oh, as Steph, as Kayla mentioned, uh, you'll be going through an interview with your farmers. So uh, we really want you to find out about the role in depth. This is your chance to um, ask all the questions, what you'll be doing in a kind of maybe a, a normal week, a normal day, uh, what the kind of schedule is. So if you're on a sheep farm, is it a uh, sort of shearing, landmarking, uh, crutching situation? Are you shearing three times a year or... We want, to, you, we want you to ask all those questions. Sometimes on farms, accommodation is provided, and this is a really important question to ask your farmers in your interview. So if accommodation is required, what sort of accommodation are you, are you going into? Are you going to be in a house by yourself? Do you need furniture for that house? Will bedding be pr provided, e.g. sheets, quilts, pillows, etc.? Or do you need to bring that stuff yourself? And if so, that's something you'll need to organise prior to going onto farm. You don't want to rock up on farm without bedding. That's a big no-no. <laughs> Um, we want to make sure if you're in shared accommodation, are you going to be cooking your own food or is food going to be provided for you? So you need to ask those sorts of questions because you will need to make sure potentially if uh, if you're cooking for yourself that, you know, you're taking food out to farm with you in that first week because um, if you're in a regional or rural area, shops aren't always open uh, long hours on the weekends. So just being aware of those uh, new details. Um, do you need a driver's license and do you need a car? For some of you, um, you may be moving into state and this will be a really good opportunity to ask your farmer um, if they have a car available for you to borrow until your car can make it over there, if you're not driving it or travelling in it. Um, do you need to buy a car when you get to that town? All of those sorts of questions. And especially some farm farms and farmers have multiple farms that are all interconnected by major roads. And so you will probably need a provisional license um, at the very least um, or looking to get one in the near future of starting. So you can drive independently on that farm. Um, as we said, uh, location to nearest towns. So find out how far it is uh, to your the local community. If you'd like to join a sporting team, what's available um, and how long will that take to get to the sporting uh, places you have to go to or uh, whatever type of community uh, event you'd like to be involved in. Um, like we said, a typical day on farm, usually it's probably a typical week, no two days are ever the same on a farm. Um, this is a great chance to talk about your rates of pay, um, what's included in your rates of pay. Every farm is going to be a little bit different, so everyone's employment contract is going to look a little bit differently, but we really want to make sure that you've got, you're aware of your uh, rates of pay, if that's per hour, et cetera, your holidays, um, 
what's included? So are you getting Wi-Fi included? Is your accommodation included in that? Do you um, have to pay for food out of that? There's a certain amount of money come out for um, that accommodation fee. So just making sure we're asking all of those things. And I'd really encourage you to get your parents involved if you're not confident asking those questions. Um, like we said, time off, are you going to negotiate? If you're moving into state, are you going to negotiate working um, say 10 days off and getting five, uh, 10 days on and getting five days off uh, potentially to maximize your time at home. So they're important conversations to have. And as Kayla said, um, do you need, would you like to visit the farm? If you're close enough to visit it, we highly recommend it. It's a great way to build that relationship early on and really know what you're setting yourself up for. Um, other than that, we really open it up to farmers will ask you questions. Um, and you obviously have the chance to ask other questions. So, you know, asking how many employees are on farm, uh, yeah, what, what are the local community events, et cetera, or community things you can get involved in. And knowing that you have that training bursary there and that engagement bursary there, how is your farmer going to be able to support you in doing that? So those are some questions. And you might already have some really great um, training opportunities you'd like to do if you would like to do a certificate in ag, that's my role and we'll definitely help you do that. And but if you could specify that to your farmer early on, that's a great way to start that relationship of saying, hey, I'm doing this course in the background. Um, is there Wi-Fi available where I'm staying? And um, there'll be some days that I need to go and do blocks of training for that. And that's a great open conversation to have in those interview, um, interview times. So um, have I forgot anything there, Kayla? Uh, I'll just add in regards to accommodation. So um, most of our host farms provide accommodation, particularly if they're quite regional or very remote. Um, but there are some that don't. So it's important. Uh, you will not, you will be told about this when when Steph sends you the match, you'll get a placement profile. And in that it will say whether or not accommodation is provided. Um, and if it's not and you proceed to interview, um, it's important then also to ask the host farmer if they can help you find accommodation. So this doesn't mean that they'll pay for it, but this does mean that maybe they've got a network of people they can reach out to to help you find accommodation. Because as young people, uh, finding a rental when you're moving into a new location can be really difficult. Um, so maybe they can connect you with a local Facebook group where you can post about a profile about yourself in there. Uh, maybe they can help you arrange accommodation on someone else's farm nearby, um, whatever it might be. So just um, again, yeah, in regards to accommodation, just make sure you're having conversations about all of these things because it's not just a job, it's actually your life as well. So making sure you've got as much covered as you can in that interview process. And that's probably a good point too as well, Kayla, is um, we've had a few inquiries about bringing uh, pets, whether that includes dogs uh, and cats or horses. Um, they've been the top three. That is something you need to discuss with your farmer and disclose in your interview if you're going to be bringing an animal because there may be certain requirements you need to meet to bring that, bring that animal on farm. Um, they may also say, no, I, we, we can't have... Um, dogs that aren't working dogs there. So you need to be respectful of those um, those requirements of farm life as well, but need to make sure that if that's what you intend to do and you'd like to bring an animal with you, uh, make sure you ask the farmer that in your interview as well. Um, so we'll move on to the next slide. Just quickly, Chloe, sorry, I will add as well, um, just while we're on the topic of job requirements, um, ask about any um, clothing that you might need. So maybe you need to purchase steel cap boots, maybe you need to purchase a, a high-vis workwear, um, those sorts of things. Make sure you ask all of that. Um, we have got what to pack there, but I think, I um, know well, we don't, um, but I think it's important to get a bit of a feel for what the sort of standard of dress is. Um, some farms are happy with you wearing shorts, some are not. Um, some are happy with you wearing short sleeves, some are not. So make sure um, you ask all those questions and also vaccinations. So particularly if you're working with livestock, you might be asked to get something called a Q fever vaccination. Um, again, your host farmer should tell you about this in your application process. Um, but if you if you at least be proactive and ask them about it, that's really good too. Um, and then, yeah, most host farms will tell you about any other vaccination or health requirements that they have as well. So 
once you've had the interview, um, hopefully you've been successful in that and you've been offered a job, which is really exciting. Um, and you'll be getting your employment contract. And as Kayla said, in that employment contract, you will have negotiated a start date. So as we said, you can start on farm anywhere between January to March uh, in 2023. So that means if you normally go on a family holiday at the start of January and you're not available until the end of January, please make sure you tell your farmer that um, and just communicate that. And, and that's a negotiation between you and the farmer. Um, we as a career start will give you a detailed onboarding information kit and that will have all the information about uh, your requirements of being a part of the Ag career start program um, you know some of those early information things about going out on farm and it will also detail the online farm safety training that you need to do prior to going on farm so this is uh, quite an easy two module program uh, it's all online and it just familiarizes participants with the risks and hazards um, of on farm and how to mitigate mitigate some of those risks and what your duty of care is if you feel unsafe in a situation who to talk to uh, what that risk might be how to raise that situation with your um, host farmer or your boss so uh, that needs to be completed prior to going onto farm and we will deliver all that information to you once you've had a successful uh, interview and job offer. Once you start on farm, um, probably within the first sort of week to first two weeks, you'll do an on farm induction with the farmer. So you probably they will already have their own on farm induction that they will do for you. Um, this is a specific ag career start one and it aligns very much with what your farmers will already be doing with you. But it's basically just an on-farm safety induction. So um, this is where the first aid kit is. Um, this is who to raise issues with in this situation. Uh, this is what the standard operating procedure is of this machinery, of this um, appliance, etc. This is where the chemicals are kept. So it's just those uh, those brief early on-farm introductions and inductions that you'll do in that first four to two weeks, and then within that sort of first two weeks, we'll also check in with you, make sure um, you're all settled in on farm, uh, ask any of the questions you need to ask. Um, maybe there's been something that uh, they've talked to you about that you're not sure of or ask questions. Um, we will check in with you, but we've also got an open line the other way and that if you need to talk to us about anything, myself, Steph and Kayla are always here to uh, be on the phone to you and all that, um, our contact details will be provided to you in that first, in that onboarding package. So you've got it first up, you can provide it to your parents if uh, they need to have conversations with us too. And the farmers will also have our contact details. So um, it's a big um, support system there for you to utilise in those first couple of weeks. We all know how hard it is to start jobs. Uh, and especially when you've moved out of home and that, we wanna make sure you feel as supported as possible um, in this process and in our program. Um, yeah, anything else there, Kayla? Yeah. No. So as, um, as we go through your placement, so you've arrived on farm, you've gone through all your inductions, um, you're learning all your new skills. Um, hopefully you've got out to meet some people in the community um, and are starting to find your feet a little bit. Uh, myself and Steph will um, be checking in with you quite regularly and uh, starting to have some of those uh, training meetings to work out what you would like to use your training bursary on, etc. So we've really encouraged our farmers and we're um, screening them for this as well to make sure they're a part of the community and we want to really get you involved in the community. So whether that's recreational uh, networks or whether it's agricultural networks, uh, we want to make sure we find um, a little uh, piece of the rural area for you that you fit into and that's something that's not work related. We'll also connect you with the other Ag Career Start participants and so you'll be able to have those shared experiences together, um, which we find really important and it's great to just um, live some of those experiences with someone that might also be going through the same similar things you are. So we've got a Facebook page that we'll connect you with, um, we'll share regular um, events with you there and we really focus on that community. We want you to get to know those other participants and hopefully I'm um, in those early stages of getting to know them when you're all starting on farm, that will transition into some of these great engagement events we can get you involved in later on uh, in the year. As I said, uh, myself, Steph and Kayla will always check in with you. Uh, we'll start to do those welfare checks, making sure everything's all good on farm, that you're getting paid the correct amount. Um, that you've settled in all good. Um, I'll start to work with you on a training plan and we'll uh, start to get that happening and start to get you um, some of those skills that you'd like to upskill yourself in. 
And throughout the year, there will also be different engagement events you'll be able to attend, and they could be in the form of conferences, field days, workshops, um, and hopefully we can get a group of you together um, that are all in the same industry to attend those events, and they're always a lot of fun. Um, and as always, we've also got multiple feedback channels. So uh, myself, Steph and Kayla always have a line to a phone there that you're more than welcome to call. We've got an email uh, channel that we all have access to, but we also have anonymous feedbacks um, channels as well. So if you're not feeling comfortable telling us directly, then you can provide an anon on anonymous feedback line uh, through there and that will all be provided in the onboarding as well. So you'll have all this information um, that you can utilise throughout the uh, duration of your placement. And then, yeah, so I'll just add here, sorry, Chloe. Yeah. <clears throat> I will just add here as well. Um, so whilst the employment relationship exists between you and the host farmer, um, when you're on the program, we really strongly encourage you to make use of the program. So we don't, um, nothing, in our career start is compulsory around training or those conferences that Chloe was talking about, but they are there for you to make use of. Um, there is a budget there allocated to you that we strongly encourage you to access. Um, we've got participants this year who've been to the Gold Coast and Sydney and Brisbane, and uh, hopefully we'll have some of you going to Adelaide next year for a big event. Um, there's lots and lots of options. We strongly encourage you uh, to make use of those. At the very least, it is an expectation in the program that you do communicate with Steph and Chloe. Um, so Chloe will communicate with you about training and Steph will communicate with you about your welfare. So how are you going? Um, and it is an expectation when you're on the program that when Chloe arranges a training meeting with you, uh, that you organise to do that training meeting. So. Um, it doesn't, you don't have to drop everything by any means, but if you can flick Steph and Chloe a text and those sorts of things when you're on farm and just say, hey, I'm free on Friday at 4.30 or whatever it might be to do your training meeting, or you, if maybe you can't call Steph, but you can send her a text and say, hey, Steph, doing really well. Um, yeah, don't need any help. Thank you so much. But as long as we know that you're doing okay, um, that's all that we ask for. So just a, I guess, a blanket statement. Um, not to drop off the radar once you arrive on farm because we really do want to make sure you're having a great time. Yeah, um, and that's a yeah great segue into how we can support you towards the end of the placement too. So you'll be well supported during your placement and then towards the end of the placement, um, as you hopefully already know, is there's different options. Um, you might already be going off to uni, you might have got had that booked in already, uh, you might have really enjoyed your time on farm and you can stay on farm for another year if that host farmer offers you that. Uh, you might have tried sheep and now you want to try dairy. So uh, we can help facilitate those conversations into trying a new industry. Uh, but yeah, we really want to um, discuss that employment adventure with you next and any pathways that we can help you get into beyond the program. Uh, obviously, there's long term employment on the host farm and you'll become an alumni of our program. So we'll connect you with constant uh, networking opportunities. We hope that you guys can keep a network of your own. Um, it's always really great to be able to draw back on your networks that you've created throughout your career. Um, so hopefully you'll be able to keep in touch with everyone through our alumni network. And you'll also receive a written lef reference letter from the host farmer, just detailing how you've gone, how, how much you've grown, um, the skills you've learned, etc. And you can use that for future employment uh, if you don't stay on that host, uh, host farm that uh, second year. So uh, that sort of happens towards the end of the placement, um, but we're only at the beginning, so we won't delve too much into that now. Um, so I guess just some frequently asked questions, we're starting to come to the end. So if you do have any questions, please, by all means, put them in the chat there and Kayla and I will answer them um, as best we can. But these are just some of the frequently asked questions that we get around the application process. Um, so we've sort of addressed most of these, but just to refresh, I don't know what industry to pick and can you help me? So absolutely we can. We've got uh, many farmers applying to the program in all different industries all across Australia. Um, we can help uh, answer those questions. As Kayla said, if you really like livestock and you really want to work with animals, um, we can find the right placement for you. If you're not so keen on animals and you want to work in the more of the ag tech space with some of this great um, big U butte machinery they have, um, we can help facilitate that. We do really hope that you will do some research um, into your 
what it is involved in each industry. Um, each of the industries have uh, multiple corporate bodies that, um, you know, you can find information about there. Um, there's a lot of social media influences as well that do, do really show, honestly, a day in the life of stories. So if you can find some of them, and even if you could ask someone um, around your local area whether they might know someone that has been in that situation before, um, it'd be great if you could do some research too and we can just tune the finer details. Um, I don't want to move too far from home. Do you have anything local to my area? As Kayla said, um, the more local you go to your area, uh, the less uh, opportunities they may be. So we just ask you to be a little bit flexible with that. But we do understand that sometimes you do need to stay close to home and we'll uh, try every effort to make that possible. But unfortunately, um, sometimes it's not possible. So but we'll keep in contact mm. with you with about that as well. Yeah. And um, um, sorry, Chloe, uh, just in regards to location as well, you've just triggered something for me. Um, if you've got a personal reason as to why you might want to stay closer to home, let us know because what we can do is advocate on your behalf with the host farmer. So treat our team like um, your best buddy going through this process. So we're here to support you. So if you need something specific, it's really important you communicate with us because then we can go into bat for you with the host farmers. Likewise, we'll be doing the same for them as well but um, that all sort of happens behind the scenes but as long as we're aware of what your situation is um, trust me we've had every specific situation you can imagine in the program this year and we can work with all sorts of uh, circumstances so just let us know. Yeah absolutely um, so the big one is and I love this one because this is what everyone asks us the most is how much will I earn again it's farm dependent it farm dependent every farm is a little bit different and every industry is a little bit different but ultimately you will be paid at or above award wages if you'd like to look into the awards that you can be paid at they are the pastoral award and they are the horticultural award and you can look at them anytime on the internet they're available um, there so if you just google them and then how do I know what to pack again uh, the Ag Career Start team can help you here, but this is a great um, question to ask your farmer. Um, even if you've been offered the job um, and you've been thinking about it later on, um, to ask them prior to you getting on farm, because um, it's really important to know that uh, if you take this stuff with you, it'll be probably a bit easier than finding it in a rural, rural area. For example, I live um, in a rural area in New South Wales and I needed a new motorbike helmet. Um, our local stores um, didn't have a size that fit me, so I ended up having to travel two hours to get it. So you need to be aware that those are the sort of situations that you could come across. So if you're ready to go when you get to the farm, sometimes you won't have everything and that's totally fine. But if you're pretty well majority on top of it and you've got those PPE requirements, your boots, your jeans, your long sleeve shirts, etc., um, you'll be uh, well on your way to success there. But definitely a great one to ask your farmer. And as Kayla said, um, different farms will have different requirements. Um, you may need wet weather gear in some areas and not in other areas. Um, and what if you don't like the farm? And this is um, this is a really uh, good question. Steph's there to help. Um, that's why we check in with you fairly regularly and we really want those open communication lines with you. If you're um, feeling a little bit homesick, if you're um, finding it hard to gel with your community, et cetera, we want to know that and we really want to work with you to help that. Um, we want to um, get on top of these um, problems early so that you can have a successful year and we can work with you to um, see what might be the right fit for uh, the situation that you're in. And will I be the only employee? Again, all farms are different uh, based on sizes, the industry you're in. Um, if you're not comfortable being the only employee and you'd really like to work in a uh, more of a social environment, um, we want to please specify that in your application so we can find that right fit for you. Um, if you're more of a one on one person and are really intrigued to learn from um, someone who can share that knowledge with you just directly um, or working in a smaller team, then please specify that as well. Um, we want to find the best match for you that we can, um, given the farmers that we get and given your preferences, etc. So just, yeah, if anyone has any questions, please pop them in the chat. Otherwise, that brings us towards the end of our um, webinar tonight. Yeah, uh, I will just cover off quickly in regards to um, any issues with your uh, host farm placement. So let's say you arrive to farm and you're really not happy after a couple of weeks. Um, 
we will know about that because, as Chloe said, you'll have been communicating nice and regularly with us. And what that means is we can start to gear up potentially a, a farm move. So we don't encourage this because they're hard to find. But um, if if necessary for any reason, so maybe you really are just not gelling with either your host farmer or someone you're working with on the farm, uh, we might look to move you to another placement. Um, there is an expectation around behaviour um, on the program, both from our host farmers and from our participants. Um, and if anyone breaches that sort of expectation, then we might also remove you from the program as well. But uh, really important to understand that um, you're not locked into anything. So if you're unhappy, please tell us and we will absolutely support you the best we can. Um, I hope, yeah, Chloe and I have both impressed upon you that uh, S uh, support is our uh, motto in the Ag Career Start program. Uh, Want to make sure that you're all happy, healthy, having a fantastic time on farm um, and that you walk away from your experience um, with a really positive one. So. I don't see any questions in the chat, so that's uh, good news. Hopefully we haven't given you way too much detail tonight. Again, any questions, the email is there uh, on the screen right now. Send us an email. Steph, Chloe and I all have access to that email inbox. Happy to chat to you anytime. Happy to set up a time to meet with you. Happy to set up a time to meet with your parents if you have any questions. Whatever it might be, here to help. Uh, and we thank you very much for even considering Ag Career Start uh, uh, for a potential gap year. And we also um, thank you in advance for your applications. We can't wait to meet you all.